So in this video tutorial, I will show you how you can explore the simulation that is largely on the Earth Moon system. Double click on the file, it should look something like that. It launches to HTML, just double click on the top panel to enlarge the simulation to full screen. Now there is this menu at the bottom which shows the Moon and the Earth as indicated in the position here. So this is by default. So you can change the setup of the simulation by selecting through the menu bar so you will require like for example you're interested in moon surface then you select that map option okay so in this case the moon surface so you can see for example you want the earth surface with the earth moon system so that will be the menu then you can see that the test mass is already on the surface of the earth while the moon is in some distance that is very far away but accurate as of the astronomical data that you can get from reliable sources. So this already has preset values of M1 which is the Earth mass about 6 to power 24, Moon which is about 7.35 power 22 and you can actually go to this little input box which then you can eject this test mass of 1 kilogram at a particular speed out of the Earth's atmosphere. So let's say you believe after your calculation 6000 is correct. Make sure after you key in 6000, press enter and then click play. You will find that the simulation should move, Okay, but it moved so fast and came back. So that means 6000 is not the escape velocity of uh, projectile from the surface of the moon. So maybe your calculation shows as 11,000. So you can try 11,000. Click play. Now you find that the, the test mass can now travel a little bit further away from the pool of the gravity of the Earth. As it progresses towards outer space, you can find that in this case, the moon is still there. So the moon should be able to provide some additional gravitational pull to drag the object out. But somehow through the physics of it, the projectile is unable to escape the pool of the Earth. So let's say you have done all this calculation correctly you deriving at a number of 11,200 meters per second key that in press enter okay now you let's say for example if you think that the moon is going to affect the validity of your test so uncheck the second m2 so that there is no moon on the other end of the simulation there's some graphic bugs which i will remove e eventually but uh, the moon is actually disappeared already so after clicking on play you find that the test mass now travels to the right and you can speed up the simulation not requiring you to sit down and, and look at the sim and then you can find that now the test mass has escaped beyond the screen of the simulation with time still running okay so this is evidence that this is uh, has escaped the pool of the earth now there may be other scenarios that you may require to know or, okay let's say for example now you believe that 20,000 is correct. So if you click 20,000 as your escape velocity, I'm checking the M2 again for the, for the test to be a true test of the escape velocity. You will find that now the escape test mass can now travel to infinity and beyond while having an excessive an excess of kinetic energy Okay, after you have reached infinity. So this is way beyond the escape velocity of 11,200. 11, now you can also check on the G field to look at the graph that's typically associated with G field. You can also select the potential field, potential graph. And the potential graph, then you need to use the slider on the left in order to adjust the scale for the appropriate graph to be shown meaningfully for physics learning. Now, typically in your questions, you will require to determine a position in outer space in between Earth and Moon, such that the net force on the test mass or the satellite in this case would be experiencing a, a force of zero due to the gravitational pull. So at this particular position, you can find that it is somewhere in between the Earth and the Moon. And when you click play on a simulation, you can find that the test mass should not move as much. As you can see from the gravitational potential, this is something corresponding to the maximum on the, gravita on the gravitational potential graph. So this is a point where the gradient is zero and it should 
be the point where there is net force equal to zero. Now clicking play on the simulation now will allow the time to lapse and you can see that actually the position of the test mass doesn't change as, change as much while the G net is changing a little bit but very, of very small magnitude. This has to do with the dynamics in an unstable equilibrium therefore you find that there has to be a slight change in the value of the net force but it should roughly be corresponding to zero still. Thank <music> you.